Last week at As We Speak, I spoke to Raya Bidshari, the CEO and founder of the educational futuristic online platform Orcademy, about how to build a school of the future during these pandemic times. This week, we continue our conversation and discuss the role of university in this new future and the importance of personalized learning plans. I hope you enjoy it. You know, we've talked about schools. What happens to university and higher education and that whole incredible experience? I mean, there are kids who are so sad. They might not be able to go to university post the summer. You know, some universities might not open till January. Their first years of university gone. So much grief, so much loss. Yeah, I think it's similar with universities in that if you ask most students what they gain from the university experience, the main thing that they say is the fact that they left home, that they became independent, that they got to, you know, it, that, that story of coming of age and uh, meeting other amazing young minds, having freedom for the first time. So that's what most people emphasize on. So I really hope that we are able to kind of bring university models back with an emphasis on that. At the same time, what a lot of students are realizing, because now that all the learning has moved to online, a lot of students are realizing how overpriced the current education system for universities especially is. Uh, In the United States, we're seeing that student loan uh, debt has surpassed credit card debt. You're seeing universities that charge anywhere between 30 to $60,000 a year of tuition. And what students are realizing now is I could take online courses from the best universities in the world on Coursera or Audacity or even do online degrees or nano degrees that cost like way less, right? They're a fraction of the price. So I think the way I'm envisioning university models in the future is you still have these hubs where students can interact and engage and have social experiences, but the learning has been, um, you know, modularized. Right. Uh, and that it's much more flexible and agile. Like I could do a couple of courses, go back to the workforce, come back to a couple of works, courses, upskill or mix and match with internships and apprenticeships uh, instead of kind of forcing kids to go through a four year degree and then having a, maybe having a job afterwards. So I hope that the university experience will continue the emphasis on social interactions, modularize into nano and micro degrees with flexibilities and dramatically reduce the cost that you currently have on students and parents. What do you think the top skills are that kids need to cope with these tumultuous times right now? I think, well, the main one, and I feel like if you have the skill, you can sort the rest of it out, is learning how to learn. Uh, Most of us go through the schooling system learning without actually being taught how to learn best. You know, there's everything from basic strategies that you can deploy to improve retention, all the way to understanding how the brain works when it learns best to actually improve the learning experience. Um, You know, we live in a world where we all have access to a wealth of information at our fingertips. There's no reason for us to memorize things, but knowing how to access information and then use it to solve problems on, on an ongoing agile basis is that critical skill that you need to have under how to learn. Uh, that aside, I, I really believe that we also need to focus on mindsets around grit and resilience, uh, but even more emotional intelligence, which is an area that is very difficult to replace with machines. And we talk about emotional intelligence. We're not just talking about understanding your emotions, but also regulating it, being able to be sensitive to it, but others. And um, yeah, I'd say those are some of the key areas that students should be working on during such times. Uh, what would your ideal timetable look like? Do you have like a little drawing or do you have, what would it look like? What would it include? What would it totally exclude? Yeah. What would it be like? Here's the thing. I, this is a question we are actually asking ourselves at our Academy and when we're envisioning, uh, you know, future models of education. I don't believe that we should have one universal type of a t- timetable for every student. The ideal scenario is that students get control over designing their own timetable because we're all different, right? So for me personally, um, kind of judging by how I like to work, I like to have my mornings open for my own independent kind of 
either learning or working and have my calls and meetings and sessions in the afternoon and then have my evenings open. There could be another student that would prefer to wake up later in the morning and be productive from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., right? So I think in the ideal scenario, we give students some control over how their timetables are organized. Perhaps they want to spend one day of the week on athletics and other extracurricular activities and actually go into the learning hub or the school for three days a week or four days a week. So these are uh, kind of possibilities that we want to bring out. Um, but in terms of what the timetable would constitute of, I think we need to have a, more of a balance in the curriculum of when it comes to both soft skills and technical skills. Right, right now, we build those soft skills such as creativity, critical thinking, collaboration as a final layer. It's not guaranteed that every student will graduate with, let's say, public speaking or uh, kind of rational thinking and critical thinking. It happens often in extracurricular. But I think we should flip flip the model whereas the full emphasis is on these critical skills competencies and values and the content emphasis is actually a much smaller percentage of time that is spent in the curriculum I completely agree with you because yeah. what they're getting out of their extracurriculars and the kind of uh, projects they do with their extracurriculars uh, you know you see the excitement you see the you know you see all you see all that adrenaline and you think oh my god you've just learned more than you did and you know in five hours of school. So uh, I, I totally get that. And you've mentioned creativity so many times. What is the role of the arts and creative endeavors like artistic endeavors in the jobs of the future? Yeah, so we're actually going through what we call, uh, experts are calling the imagination age. Um, it's an era in which creativity and imagination become the primary creators of economic values. So we're seeing this through the rise of platforms on social media and YouTube that, you know, increase access to content and often creative content. Uh, we're seeing it through the rise of technology such as virtual reality, but we're also seeing it due to technological automation, whereas jobs that where jobs that require technical monotonous repetitive skills are most easily automated whereas those that require higher order thinking or creativity are most difficult to automate so those are just some of the trends that are kind of driving the need for creativity in the workforce now there is often a misconception that creativity is really only linked to the arts it's true that the arts and all their different shapes and form can be a really powerful exercise and stimulant and source of creativity. But we also see creativity come in, let's say, science through the way that we approach, um, uh, you know, uh, innovations and solving new problems or research. You know, Albert Einstein was known for being extremely creative in his worldview and the way that he saw physics which allowed him to come up with the theories of general relativity. Entrepreneurs can be creative in the way that they innovate and in thinking outside the box and going against the grain and designing solutions and products that can be revolutionary. So it's really a universal skill that unfortunately the school system associates with the arts, but can actually apply across different domains. Now, one of the ways in which we're currently stifling creativity is that we've created a system where students are consuming more than they're creating. So they're constantly being bombarded with information and content and spoon fed, you know, tasks and exercises, but very little time in the school day or let's say the school week is spent saying to them, create something, create a video, write an article or develop an idea or solution. They spend very little time doing that. And we've seen that students actually really struggle when they're put into that situation and given the opportunity to create something of their own. We've designed them to be consumers and not creators. And that is a huge concern given the need for creativity in the workforce. What is your message to parents who need to prepare themselves so they can prepare their children? I mean, we're here now. Uh, in a very gray area and I'm sure since you're in education um, you have seen how uh, difficult just dealing with this whole new paradigm has been for all of us. So one of the advice I always like to give to young minds is to you know it's the very it's very simple instead of focusing so much on your grades on your diplomas on what you're memorizing or not memorizing focus instead on building your skills your portfolio and your network 
And there are ways you can do this, right? You can actually start networking and finding mentors in the workforce that can give you regular advice. You can build a portfolio of projects, you know, set aside time to create things that excite you. And you can build your skills through a wide uh, variety of ways. Um, but ultimately, I also want, I hope that parents and students don't panic during a time like this. You know, I think there's often a lot of fear that kids are missing out on the curriculum, that they're not learning in the last few months. And my response to that is that it's okay. You know, we're living through really tumultuous times, a lot of accelerating change. I think the most important thing sometimes is to just focus on mental well-being and mental health. It's exactly why in our upcoming summer camp, we have an entire day focused just on emotional intelligence and practicing gratitude and focusing on finding purpose. Because sometimes it's not necessarily about, you know, the diplomas and certifications, but just the peace of mind that we have right now. So I hope that parents don't panic and stay calm um, and go beyond the traditional school system and curriculum and ensuring their students are building their portfolio skills and network. All right. Thank you so much, Raya. Raya, can you just briefly tell us, um, so Academy has summer camps, just if you could just let parents okay. know, do they just have to go online? What is it that you're offering right now uh, in Academy on your platform? Yes, so if you go on academy.org, mm -hmm. uh, you can see all of our different offerings and programs. We are doing summer camps throughout the summer uh, that are focused on preparing students for a post-pandemic world. These are completely online, they're interactive, live, and social, and cover areas all the way from critical thinking down to emotional intelligence. So they're focused on those core skills that we talked about today. Uh, but we also have an online platform where students can access modules and do their own self-paced learning in an interactive inspiring way for anyone we know that these are difficult times so for anyone who can't afford access to the online platform you can email us access code to info at allacademy.org and we'll give you free access for two months and uh, yeah if you follow us on social media we regularly post about other workshops and programs and learning hub program that we do so that's a great way for parents to keep up to date with what we're working on that's brilliant Thank you so much, uh, Raya. Thank you for all inspiring all of us. Guys, I hope you really enjoyed this. I hope it was informative. Uh, please go on academy.org and email info at academy.org if you need any more details. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. And uh, see you soon. Thank you for watching.